Hello, everybody. Um, Colette O'Connell here from the Irish Beekeepers Association, a company limited by guarantee here in Ireland. And we'd like to extend a, a big thank you to our colleagues in the UK who have invited us to join them for Asian Hornet Week. I'm joined today by Rachel Hayden, a research assistant with University College Cork here in the Republic of Cork in Ireland. And she's also uh, works with Atlantic Positive who are extremely active uh, on the whole issue of Asian Hornet uh, around the Atlantic coast and countries. So um, basically um, Anne and, uh, invited us to give an update as to the situation here in Ireland. And to date, we've been very, very fortunate in that we have not discovered or been made aware of any established colonies of Asia, Asian Hornet yet, right? And I say yet because I know now that we can expect them. It's just a, a question of when. So beekeepers um, around the country have been preparing themselves for this uh, visitor when it lands. We've had a few scares, as Rachel can attest to. Uh, we had one um, that was found in a delivery to Dublin there a few months ago. Um, we first became more aware and active on the issue when we read Dr. Sarah Bunker's book um, about the Asian Hornet and she opened up the world of Jersey to us and we we, we came to know John de Cartre and uh, Alistair Christie and they've literally been like our guardian angels uh, hoping that we can keep this predator out of our country and uh, for the sake of our honeybees and our native pollinators. So basically, um, as PRO of the Irish Beekeepers Association, and I'm also a director, I've been hoping that we could get the word out to the public. We need the public. We need to involve the public um, in identifying this pest when it comes. And to date, people have been really, really good. Um, here in Ireland, um, we have a government department. Um, it's called the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. I don't know if you can see their logo there, um, but they have responsibility uh, for beekeeping and the Asian Hornet. Um, there's also the National Parks and Wildlife Services and they will actually go and take nests um, as they are found. Um, so um, to date, we haven't been very, very um, organized. Uh, and I think we have a lot to learn still from our colleagues in the UK, but also from our colleagues in Europe. Um, I have been made aware last summer of the Balearic Islands and how successful they have been at keeping out this predator and how it's it's basically because they they actually react quite quickly to when a sighting um, is found, just as they do in Jersey. So um, the Department of Agriculture here in Ireland um, have set up um, a, a sentinel program and um, it's for beekeepers to actually be, be proactive and work in, in spotting Asian Hornet when it arrives. Now, the programme also uh, includes um, watching out for the small hive beetle and uh, tropilaps. Um, but I'm going to focus here on what they have issued to beekeepers. And basically, they have given us um, an Asian Hornet trap with uh, lures that we can use in our apiaries. We, um, we can cite them in our apiaries and they have uh, sample dates and um, you know, uh, for, for the other uh, pests that we're also monitoring for. But uh, the Asian Hornet, it's it's a fast reaction. Um, we also have the National Biodiversity Data Centre here in Ireland, and they have an app for the public to actually um, uh, input uh, information if they spot uh, the Hornet um, or the Asian Hornet. Um, but we as beekeepers, we were very proactive last spring and with um, the advice of our colleagues in Jersey and other countries, we actually wrote a letter. We, we joined with all the other beekeeping groups on the island of Ireland and we actually sent a list of requests and requirements that we would see as necessary to the department and the minister and the National Parks and Wildlife. So basically, we're, we're looking for uh, an Asian Hornet hotline to be set up by the, the government departments and manned by someone knowledgeable who can give a quick response to any phone calls they might get from the public. We were also hoping that there'd be an advertising campaign to raise public awareness and to keep the um, subject out there and to get it out there using social media, newspapers, radio and television, billboards, etc. cetera. Um, any any um, medium should be used. 
We also were hoping that any specimens that might be found would be checked and assessed by scientists such as Rachel there in the background and experienced volunteers, particularly in the springtime, if we if we have any incursions that we could get information from the Queen, uh, the contents of her stomach, what she has been eating, uh, an emergence from hibernation, and maybe it, it would give us some indication of where she originated from. Um, also, any of this would um, be replicated in the autumn and it would also establish at what stage the nest is at, as this is, um, we've, we've been advised that this is the best practice, um, the need to find and destroy um, secondary nests before uh, queen emergence. Uh, so University College Cork will be, and other universities around the country will, will be um, um, important there, but particularly University College Cork, because they, they've, they're they going to be doing the genetic analysis and Rachel will speak more about that. Um, we've also requested that the Asian hornet traps with locations at ports and airports, but also further inland, such as inland freight handling hubs, as we have seen in Europe that this a, Asian hornet can travel quite big distances and can quite get can get quite far inland. Um, uh, I cite the examples of what they found in Hamburg and Scotland. And then again, I, I mentioned the Albaric Islands already. Um, they're located only 50 kilometers from mainland Spain and up to very recently, they've continued to remain free of the Asian hornet insect due to strong proactive team of rangers, which act immediately to prevent it from becoming established there. Now, I know that this kind of um, they've been very proactive over the summer because they did have some um, colonies that were found and there, there is concern there. I'm not up to date with the with the um, current situation there, but um, I am aware that they have been very, very successful at keeping it out. And I would hope that Ireland could follow their lead and uh, maintain the same um, uh, uh, proactiveness in keeping out this um, insect. Um, I'd like to thank John de Carteret in particular. He's been hugely valuable uh, in, 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 in guiding us um, and helping us uh, to act and be proactive here. And all our colleagues in the Atlantic Positive uh, team, we look forward to working with you going forward. And um, if any of you have any further questions or want any further contact, please contact me, pro at irishbeekeepers.ie. Perfect. Thank you so much, Colette. Um, it was great uh, to hear what's going on with the Irish Beekeepers Association and the work of Jersey and how it's impacting us here in Ireland. So I work in UCC along with my colleagues Simon Harrison and Fidelma Butler on the Atlantic Positive Project. So just some background on the project itself. It brings together over 10 research institutes and universities from Western Europe to combat the spread and impact of the Asian Hornet in the Atlantic area. So what we're doing in areas where the Asian Hornet is already established, like France and Spain, researchers there are studying the diet of the Asian Hornet and particularly looking at its impact on apiaries and native pollinators and seeing how they can minimize those impacts as well. However, in Ireland, our objectives of the project are slightly different as we don't have the Asian Hornet here. It's currently not present. Instead, we're focusing on assessing the risk of the Asian Hornet establishing in Ireland. Many factors go into a successful invasion. It's not just about the Hornet getting into Ireland. We also need to look at other factors that might influence its ability to establish a colony and spread across Ireland. So this is looking at the Irish envelope, uh, environment envelope, looking at our climate, our food availability, the type of habitat that we have, and looking at the Asian Hornet's biology, their life cycle, how they've adapted to their invaded range and their current native range as well. So all these factors come together to look at the risk of the Asian Hornet establishing in Ireland. We're also looking at the biosecurity measures that are already in place in Ireland, not just for the Asian Hornet, but for other invasive species. So we're working with the Irish government on this as well. Uh, we're hoping to conduct a stakeholder survey in the next few months, uh, which would include importers and other groups associated with the accidental introduction of invasive species into new areas. This will give us a, a better idea overall of the risk of the Asian Hornet getting in and our ability to report it and to stop it from you know, spreading. Uh, 
uh, already mentioned in April of this year, a single hornet was discovered in Dublin. Um, although this doesn't mean that the Asian hornet is established in Ireland, it's very important that we are prepared for the Asian hornet. As Colette already mentioned, we are conducting a genetic analysis of the specimen that was collected. Uh, this will help us to determine if it came from a European population or a Asian population. And why that's really important is it helps us see what pathways into Ireland are available for the Asian Hornet. And that way that we can um, work together to create a strategy to stop the accidental uh, import of the Asian Hornet, as that is the most likely route that the Hornet will get into Ireland. Uh, we're also working with our research partners in York to create a universal strategy. Um, again, every country is different because all of our situations are different. So this is really important that we, you know, currently understand what biosecurity measures are in place and what are the best methods for tackling the Asian Hornet. We can learn a lot from other countries and how they have previously um, handled the Asian Hornet. So in a way, we're in a great position in Ireland where we can see what has happened in other countries and learn from them. We're also uh, really involved with the beekeepers as well. That's a really important aspect of the Atlantic Positive Project, particularly here in Ireland, as we need to raise awareness on the species and provide training. So we're working with beekeeper associations like the Irish Beekeeper Association and the Federation of Irish Beekeepers to get that information out. Earlier this summer, we conducted a beekeeper survey that got a great response. We're really grateful for that. So we had 310 respondents to this survey and the purpose was for us to evaluate what is already known about the Asian Hornet so that we could tailor our project towards beekeepers. We need to know what they know about the Hornet so that we can provide the information that is most important to them. Uh, and just for example, some of the results that we got from the survey are very interesting. So we asked, how much do you know about the Asian Hornet? A lot, a little, not at all. So over 66% of respondents said they know a little about the Asian Hornet, whereas only 16% said they know nothing at all. Obviously, our goal is to get everyone into I know a lot category. Um, and with that, what we want to do is provide resources such as posters, um, videos, any infographics, just to provide information about you know, the diet of the Hornet, its life cycle, where you're likely to find it as well. Um, additionally, we asked, you know, are has any beekeepers received training on how to monitor for the Asian Hornet in Ireland? 97.7% of respondent beekeepers have not received any training on how to monitor for the Asian Hornet. However, 97.4% of respondent beekeepers would like to learn how to monitor for the Asian Hornet. And additionally, a lot more would like to just receive information on the Asian Hornet, particularly training on how to monitor and just information in general about its impact on beekeeping, um, particularly from Europe and from other areas that we can learn from. So this has been really insightful, that survey. Um, uh, we're just doing a bit more work on it now to um, kind of do a deeper analysis of that, but it has helped us so far with the project. We are currently running our first Asian Hornet Week in Ireland, where we're providing information uh, so we'd just like to say thank you to everyone that's been involved in Atlantic Positive Project so far. Uh, we're really looking forward to continuing our work with the beekeepers and the Irish government as well to hopefully get just more information out about the Asian Hornet in Ireland so that we are prepared should another Hornet be found here. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, listen, um, it, it's really been um, heartening. Um, I actually had contact with a small child there recently. We were transferring a wasp's nest from his granddad's and he knew all about Asian Hornet. And it was yeah. just so heartening because the concern out there, I mean, John de Carteret has said to us that this um, Asian Hornet isn't just an issue for beekeeping beekeepers it's uh, an issue for the public and we need to have the public involved and i think it's great to see uh, initiatives like asian hornet week and also uh, steve has set up uh, the asian hornet facebook page for ireland as well and just to have contact as you said um knowledge is power and uh, hopefully we can we can do our best to, to defend against this insect i mean you have to admire it it is a, a very um uh, it, it's really a good apex predator. It's up at the top there. Um, one thing I just want to share with people as well is that um, John de Cartre and some of the Jersey Action Group, they actually use the term yellow-legged hornet. And I think that's a great help in identifying 
this particular insect as opposed to other beneficial pollinators because so many people see a wood wasp and they think oh that's one and the poor old wood wasp gets whacked <laughs> and it's actually a beneficial so yeah we need to kind of you know let people know that you know um there are good pollinators out there as well but this is a great start so hopefully we can go from strength to strength in this and uh, we can create links and, and webinars for people so they can actually monitor for Asian Hornet and more people can get involved with the programs that are there. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Bye.